<laughs> nice scenery now. <laughs> Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a Sunday vlog. It's currently half eight in the morning and Kevin and I are on a walk. Baby bear, do you think people live in there? Do you think people live in their boats? It's windy. How are you feeling today, baby bear? Good. Feeling good? <sighs> Such a beautiful morning. Martin Luther, the reformer, once said, Marriage is a school of character. I could not agree more. Isn't it amazing how God uses people in our lives to sanctify us? Sanctification in marriage sometimes looks like you're sitting in an exam, struggling, wrestling with the questions, and sometimes pulling your hair out because you are having a hard time. I've been married to Kevin for two and a half years, and man, I can say that marriage is indeed a school of character. Gary Thomas asked the question why God designed marriage to make us holy more than to make us happy I am thankful that God gives us the pleasure to come alongside someone who makes us happy and feel loved but most importantly go through this hard life with that person our earthly dearest the Christian life is a long hard road and having someone who points you to Jesus makes a world of difference so yes, marriage is a school of character, so embrace it, cherish it, and enjoy it. Like last year, I decided to read the entire Bible again. This year, however, I'm reading it chronologically, which I've never done before. Today, I read through Leviticus 14 through 16. It talked about the laws for cleansing lepers, cleansing houses, the laws about bodily discharge, and the Day of Atonement. Leviticus is difficult to understand, I'm telling you. I sometimes read through the laws and think, what? That doesn't make any sense. My little brain gets super confused. But God is holy. He cares about the little things. He is very specific. What I learned about me reading today is that God is holy. Leviticus 15.31 reads, Thus you shall keep the people of Israel separate from their uncleanness, lest they die in their uncleanness by defiling my tabernacle that is in their midst. It must have been difficult living in the ancient times. My readings taught me of God's amazing grace. Today, I don't have to worry whether I am clean or unclean. Because Jesus' sacrifice on the cross made me clean. And those who are in Christ are clean and pure forever. Okay, dokes. I thought I would share with you guys some of the books that I personally read. You guys know I read a lot of books for my essays and stuff but these are the books that i read for myself and the books that i don't have to read for seminary work 
So yeah, I'm gonna share with you guys the four books that I'm currently reading. The first one is this called Character How Do I Change by Sharon Dickens. I am reading this book with a friend, Claire. We've been friends for almost four months. She is our intern in our church plant from the US and our relationship and friendship has blossomed into this beautiful beautiful flower <laughs> so we are enjoying this book so far this book is so funny and this book basically goes through the fruits of the holy spirit so yeah so far so good the next one is this called the enemy within straight talk about the power and defeat of sin by chris landgard i'm going through this with my one to one partner as well we are almost halfway through it a quarter through it this is so good so convicting and this book talks about sin and how we overcome it and this book is very challenging and so far I'm learning a lot from this book and it makes me reflect about my own personal sanctification journey so this book pushes me to reflect about my life as a Christian and how I am killing sin daily and choosing Jesus over my fleshly pleasures the next book is a biography by ian murray and it's um, a biography of amy carmichael's beauty for ashes i find that reading biographies of christian men and women of faith who have finished the race well helps me put things into perspective it makes me think about my christian life like god has only given me one life and reading biographies help me to focus on what's important reading missionaries of old and how they served God and sacrificed their life for the sake of the gospel help me focus on eternal things because I feel like it is hard for me to look for Christian examples in my generation, in our generation specifically. But when I look outside my world and see the life of other Christians in different parts of the world who live their life all in for Jesus, that makes me think of the important things in life. like. I should not waste my life on silly things and that I should pursue Jesus with all my might and so reading biographies convict me to not waste my life. And last but not least, the book that is literally changing me, transforming my mind and my heart, not because of this book but because the word of God teaches us that it is okay not to be okay. And the book is called It's Okay to Be Not Okay. The message of lament in Psalms, thinking biblically. And this is written by a Filipino scholar. I've actually never read a lot of Filipino Christian books. This is the second Filipino book that I've read. And... I'm just so thankful that my supervisor encouraged me to think outside the box and to listen to Christians all over the world and not be boxed in my Western theology. And because I became a Christian here in Scotland, I tend to read um, theology books written by Western scholars. I related to this book so much because i spent 16 years of my life in the philippines and the story about um the floods in the philippines that filipinos go through every year i've been through that i've been through um times when my parents worry about 
whether we could eat three times a day because life in the Philippines was hard and this book is so good and he talks about you know it's not a coincidence that the book of psalms has more lament than praise and so i was like wow i didn't really notice that before and basically the book is saying that it's okay to struggle it's okay to be depressed it's okay to be sad it's okay to feel down you know we think of mature christians who are always rejoicing even though they're struggling and going through difficult times but when we look at the bible when we look at the old testament the people who are closest to god they were the ones who struggle the most like we see job we see david they were not afraid to tell God, you know, Lord, how long will I struggle? How long will I go through this pain? You know, we Christians should not neglect our sad emotions and that those um, deep, dark emotions we should bring to God and we should tell God how much we are struggling. And one of my favorite takeaways from this book under the subheading called when god's people struggle financially and i think this is in the chapter life is hard life is a struggle he shared a story about this woman who was rescued from a radical muslim group in the philippines um, he writes when gracia burnham went back to the u.s after she was rescued from the abu sayyaf in mindanao she was asked by a reporter what is the difference between life in the jungle under your captors and your life now that you're back in the u.s this was her answer. Here, when you are thirsty, you just open the faucet and there is water. If you are hungry, you just open the fridge and get something to munch. But in the mountains, when you are thirsty, you cry out to God. And this was so profound because I remember when I was young, I was in the Philippines. I wasn't even a Christian, but seeing my parents struggle in life we would have these santo ninos in the philippines they're basically small statues of saints and i would write letters and i would tell god how much we are struggling i would tell god to provide for us because we are struggling in life i would write this long letter and i would fold this paper and put it under the santo nino and then i would wake up and i would check if my letter to god is still there and i would be so sad when that letter is still there because i'm like please santo nino please take this letter to god um and as an innocent child i was so desperate for god to hear my prayers because man we were struggling and my prayer now is that I will be spiritually hungry and thirsty for God because in the West, you know, me and Kevin, when we are hungry, we can just eat whatever we want. When we are thirsty, we have clean water. But when we are in our lowest, when we acknowledge our need of God, that's when we call out to God for help. And you know, I was talking to my friend yesterday and I was asking her, why do you think there are so little Christians in the West who have this uh, mature faith in God? And as we were reflecting about it, we were like, maybe because we have everything that we need and we tend to forget God who gives us all things and so my prayer is that i would be spiritually needy for god because that's when i go to him and i cry for help and this book really taught me to be okay whenever i'm not okay it's taught me that sometimes when i feel sad 
it can be a long process but that I should not dwell and be in my own feelings but bring my sad feelings to God and tell God what I'm truly feeling because as Christians when we struggle with difficulty and when we go to church and sing happy clappy you know dancey songs it's hard for us to truly address how we are feeling and come to God with those real feelings and let him deal with us as we are and so if you're interested in this book I will link it down below I think I got it for $1.99 on Amazon it is currently quarter past two now and we have church at half past two so if you are interested in these books i will link them down in the description box below so i've got my laptop here and my tea today we have two guys who are sharing their testimony at church so i'm very excited for that we're gonna be late so i better move it move it Church is done. It is currently 10 minutes to 4 p.m. So I think I'm gonna watch a few videos on YouTube. My friend Kendra posted a new video, so I'm gonna watch that. And I'm going to do some editing on my laptop and do some planning so i can get all organized for next week because as they say if you fail to plan you plan to fail so it's currently quarter past four i tend to just rest on sundays and do the things that fuel my soul and focus on the lord give time to the lord and spend time with kevin my husband he is off on sunday so it's just good to hang out and catch up and yeah i absolutely enjoy editing i find it not therapeutic but i just find that i what's the word i <laughs> express the creative side of me and you guys have noticed that i am getting better with my editing skills and i feel like being off of social media and not having my phone all the time my screen time before was like seven six to seven hours a day and now i only spend an hour and a half on my phone so let's see if i am being honest let's see if i have any evidence so <laughs> screen time per week yep one hour and a half and today i spent you see that i spent 31 minutes on my phone so yeah one skill that i would like to get better at is getting better at storytelling and be better at editing videos so yeah that's what i'm going to do and then pull out my planner and plan for next week so definitely being off of social media helped me to be more creative with my videos with my content with my editing skills and it also helped me to read more books and yeah have more alone time have more solitude in my life so i've been enjoying not being on social media but i can feel that youtube can sometimes have those social media effects on me so i make sure that i don't always log in on my youtube i don't have my youtube app or the creator youtube app on my phone i only have the essentials on my phone for my studying because i know myself i tend to log in on youtube every single minute of the day so i only access my youtube on my laptop so yeah let's do some editing
Hello, come on, focus. Okay guys, I am going to close the vlog here. I am getting tired and I'm going to cook dinner soon. But I want to close this vlog with a quote that I look at every single time I do my seminary work and it's by Paul Washer, one of my favorite pastors and preachers. And he said, go to your studies flee there not to become smarter than the other man but to behold his glory and so i just want to encourage you guys to read the word of god not to be smarter than the other girl or the other youtuber or the other christian from my church but to behold his glory to go to the word of god to see his beauty, to learn more about your creator. Because the more you know more about God, the more you will love him. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in my next one. Grace and peace be with you. But for now, much love and God bless. Bye.